I grew up collecting cards. I had a drawer full. I had hockey cards. My brother collected Civil War cards. My kids collect Pokemon. And while I was teaching, my students created and collected cards for the way game. I'm very proud of my students' game cards. I call them works of art and science. Works of art because they use graphic programs to create original art. Works of science because students use mnemonic techniques, whole brain or holistic learning, multiple intelligence and higher order thinking skills to create their game cards. I'll go into these ideas later in the how to make game cards lesson. Let's start with an image to help with the idea of this site being holistically integrated, of how this site is all connected. Visualize an octopus with the head being the way game and in each arm Mr. Octopus holds a tool to help you play Pathfinder, cap notes, game cards, way cards, cardboards, homework planner, game card rubrics, and way prizes. These are the basic tools you need to play. So game cards are the product that helps students become creators and distributors of learning content. Their original art, their original questions and activities give more meaning and purpose to each lesson. I call game cards products because they add beauty and value to a student's life. I encourage students to not only include curriculum content on their game cards, but important events in their lives. Don't let your memories fade. In order to make game cards, you have to learn how to use CapNote graphic organizers. CapNotes help students extract content from their lessons, summarize content, then draft questions and activities for the way game. CapNotes are just another step along the way. A few minutes at the end of each class is an effective way for students to reflect and summarize their lesson. I call this time at the end of class an incubation period, a time to let ideas sink in, a time for students to fill in the content and processes of the lesson. This is also a time for teachers to breathe and get ready for the next lesson. Visualize, if you will, an image of a teacher shoveling sand on top of a class of students. A day in class can be like that. Students go from class to class collecting more facts and figures and never having time to think about what was said or how the knowledge can be used. The next day, the same thing. Now, if students have a bit of time at the end of each lesson, if students have a system to think about their learning more deeply, then recall of content will improve and, as a result, better test scores, less frustration, basically happier students. And it's not just about creating game cards itself that bring about results. It's the whole process. There's no one big thing a teacher does, but a series of little things that bring about results. And how to end a lesson effectively is never shown on TV. Probably the worst Hollywood stereotype of a teacher is the class is about to end. The teacher is interrupted by the school bell and we see the teacher yelling over the noise about a test next week or assignment due. That's not the way to end a class. A teacher's lesson took time and effort to produce. Now students need time to process and preserve the attitudes, skills and knowledge they just learned. Information moves from teachers to students to cap notes to game cards to the way game and back again to homework and the cycle continues over again. I made Tuesday the due date for game cards just in case the student had a busy weekend. It happens. Anyways, when the students come in on Tuesday morning they hand in their three game cards and place them in their cardboards. Each student has a cardboard which is hung on a string somewhere visible in the class. 
Cardboards act as a place to put student game cards each week. Highly visible, it's easy to see who hasn't handed in their game cards. I'll collect all cards from the cardboards, divide them into three groups, class cards, the student cards, and the sharing cards. So the teacher keeps the class cards, the student keeps a copy, and the sharing card is randomly distributed to students who have handed in their game cards to share. If the student doesn't hand in their game card that week, they don't get a sharing card. You have to make cards to get cards. In some situations, we made card donations to students in special situations due to means or the ability of the student. For grading, I assign 10% of a student's grade each term for game cards. I simply take the grades recorded on cardboards Add up the totals and divide by the number of weeks in the term. Including students in creating their grades gives students a taste of what it's like to teach. This idea of including students in the marking process is important for the development of higher order thinking skills, empathy, and including students in the learning process. Each week, usually Friday afternoons, Students peer evaluate their game cards. They are given a game card rubric. Rubrics are guidelines, things to look for when evaluating. Once a grade is given, the student writes the date and score on the student's cardboard. How long students take depend on the age and ability of the individual. Now, what the teacher is going to do is to look through the game cards students created the previous week and take the best questions and activities from these cards to be entered on a smart board's random question picker. So the game on Friday reviews knowledge from the previous weekly lessons. Look for ways to empower students with more independent learning activities. The more you can get students engaged with each other, the better. It's a move away from the sage on the stage mentality. Sometimes the show gets boring. The solution? Put students in charge of more things like homework, information processing, playing the way game, evaluating game cards, mentoring classmates. Get students up. Get them moving, get them doing. Dr. Howard Gardner and his work with multiple intelligence is the guiding force behind the seven games of Way. Each game is designed to develop specific skills like acting, drawing, speaking, spelling, moving, singing, questioning, and answering. Each game is based on familiar games like Pictionary and Charades so they're easy to learn. As was said, making and sharing game cards develops many skills. It gives students something to handle. Game cards are tactile, a hands-on learning resource that create memories that won't crash, that you can trade and cherish. I talked to one mom of a former student who says she still has her game cards hanging by her desk. So, if you have forgotten things, Look over your game cards to remember your friends, your teachers, and your lessons. I like to think of game cards as lessons of mass instruction with a kinder, gentler approach to learning.